with Dr. Mike. We're at the clinic, and with summertime closing in, we've already talked about it once, but we're going to bring it up again. Summer health in your horse and basically heat stroke. We're joined again with Dr. Mike and Mrs. Ed. Dr. Mike, thanks for being here with us again. Glad to be here, Alan. Glad to be here. Now, today we're going to talk about treatment of heat stroke, how we deal with heat stroke. But first of all, I'd kind of like to recap just a bit what heat stroke is. Well, the biggest thing you want to worry about is when that temperature gets above 104 in your horse, you're starting to get in trouble. And... The sign that I always tell people, that horse stops sweating or the decreasing in the amount of sweat, something's wrong. You want to start looking. In. They're breathing heavily. They're getting fatigued, tired. You're in trouble. Well, now, what are some of the things quickly that, that we can, can recap on to, to do to prevent heat stroke? Well, the biggest thing is having your horse fit. Have your horse fit for whatever event you're going to do before you go out there and start. Don't be a weekend rider. Ride your horse seven days a week. Okay, we're at the summertime cutting, we're at the summertime trail ride, barrel race, rodeo, whatever we're doing with the horses, and they're all susceptible to heat stroke. With, with the excessive heat we have, especially here in the southeast, uh, I've done all I can do. I've got my horse fit, I've watched him go through the motions, and I feel like the heat stroke's coming on. What can we do for treatment now? Well, the big thing, when you're riding, you want to, I like, what I like to do is take a big sponge with me, and you can just stuff it up, stuff it back there in your saddlebag, and things start looking bad, get that horse to some water. There's some water around someplace. You see a cow pasture, there's a water tank, there's a stream, stop. Get out, get that sponge wet, and start sponging that horse down. Get that saddle pad and blanket off of them. And you don't want to leave wet towels on them, because sometimes those wet towels can actually insulate them and make them hotter. So you want to make sure that you get the sponge and get water over that horse. Get in the shade tree. Things that you can do to actually prevent this from getting worse. Now, as we're out on the trail ride and, and thinking about the water, uh, you know, of course, in, in, your, in the back of your truck, a lot of folks will have coolers and coolers of ice. Uh, would it be okay to take an ice bag and start moving the ice bag around on your horse at all? An ice bag is an excellent way. Just take that ice bag and start rolling around that horse's body slowly and smoothly moving over there. It's wonderful. You've got to get that temperature down any way you can, and it's very important to get it down fast. Okay, now we're looking to the normal operating range of a horse. Uh, we're doing all we can. When does it get to be critical that maybe I call a veterinarian to look at my horse? Well, the important thing is if that temperature is not dropping and you're cooling it down the best you can and your horse is still looking fatigued, not wanting to move, that's the key thing, they're not wanting to move, get the horse trailer to the horse load that horse up and get him to the vet so they can get him on some IV fluids and get this temperature down. Now when you load them, don't load them in a trailer where there's no windows and they're going to get hotter on the way there. Put them in a stock trailer with the sides open, get them to the vet, let them start some IV fluids and get this horse cooled down. And I noticed that one of your keys and that is, is get the trailer to the horse, don't make the horse work anymore. Now, uh, we're talking about this heat stroke and, and it's going on, and, and you've mentioned it to me in the previous shows that it can be some life changing and, and some permanent damage coming from heat stroke. What's some of that permanent damage? Well, unfortunately, Alan, some of the worst things we see here in the southeast where it gets real hot is death. People just be riding along, they're pushing the horse, especially in some of these endurance rides, to the limit, and the horse will actually get a heat stroke and die. Second thing to that is neurological damage. It's just like in people. I think those horses that get heat stroke are more prone to have it the second time around. So you just want to use caution and just good common sense in your horse. So just to recap, once again, signs to look for that we've got heat stroke on set. That's exactly right. What you want to look for is stopping sweating, that respiration going up in the horse, the horse becoming fatigued, and just not being that normal horse, doesn't have that same get up and go, something's wrong. Well, folks, you know how it is in your life. Dr. Mike, we thank you for the great information. Excellent. Don't let summertime get you or your horse. Take care and be cool. <laughs>